Hey y'all, this is Andy Leonard, and on this episode of Science and Engineering in KSP, we are going to lay the groundwork for starting to talk about interplanetary transfers and planetary flybys and all that good stuff by looking into the geometry of parabolas and hyperbolas. So before we move on and start talking about uh, parabolas and hyperbolas exclusively, I wanted to take a step back and talk about the reasoning behind why we call orbits conic sections. And I'm not sure if I've ever called them conic sections before. I know we've talked about patched conics, and so we're going we're gonna to see why orbits are conics here. So if we take a two-dimensional plane and we make a cross-section with one of these cones parallel to the base of the cone like this, so here's our two-dimensional plane, we're making a cut in. And we look at the intersection of this plane and the cone, then we see that it's got a circular cross-section here, right? So that's going to represent like a circular orbit. Now if we take a two-dimensional plane and we intersect it at some arbitrary angle here, and we, we uh, look at the intersection that, that this plane makes, then we see that we've got a kind of stretched funky circle or an ellipse. So this is going to be uh, most of our closed orbits in KSP, right? An ellipse. So what happens when we take a plane and we intersect it with the cone parallel to one of the sides of the cone? So if I draw a plane here like this, then I'm making uh, this edge parallel with this edge here. So if we draw this guy out, then we see if we uh, have our, what might be our periaps here, draw this out, maybe it's a little bit too skinny to be able to tell really well, but that's okay. I think you guys get the idea that we have an open conic here and that's going to be our parabola and so for the final conic section uh, you guessed it it's the hyperbola and we make that by taking a two-dimensional plane and intersecting a double-sided cone here uh, perpendicular to the base so that's going to look like this And so we basically do the same process that we did for the hyperbola. So that comes out there. That's going to come out there, ish. And that'll come out here. And this comes out here. So what we've got here is like this double-ended uh, open conic section, or this double double open orbit. So mathematically, this is going to look like this, but it doesn't quite look like this in, in, in practice. Um, so yeah, that's where the conic sections kind of come from. That's why we call them conic sections. And there's some interesting geometry you can do to figure out the nature of your conic sections. If you know um, like what's going on here, like what the angle here is and what the angle here is and all that kind of stuff. But we don't super, super need it. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and move on and we will start talking about parabolic orbits. So here's a plot of a parabola that I made in Python and, and the code's not going to be super relevant to us here, but just in case you're interested, I will put a link to it down in the comments. So the remember that the parameter that most instantly identifies what kind of conic we're working with is going to be the eccentricity. So a parabola is going to have, or a parabolic orbit, is going to have an eccentricity of 1. And so there's kind of a parallel here that we can draw with circular orbits, meaning that parabolic orbits don't explicitly exist because it's really, really hard to get an eccentricity that's an exact value. So a lot like circular orbits, we are going to use parabolic orbits as an approximation sometimes, and it'll, it'll make things uh, easier for us than, you know, dealing with uh, hy hyperbolic orbits exclusively. Um, so uh, what do we notice here? The parabola is going to open up. So what that means is that it's, think of it as like an infinitely long ellipse, which means that we have a semi-major axis of infinity. So it's, it's not going to close. Um, 
But what else do we have? So here we'll say that this dot here represents our focus F, so that's the uh, sun or the planet or the uh, moon or something like that. And so what that means is that this distance here, this is going to be the periapse distance, right? Or the periapse radius. Okay, and so what that means, what we can do is we can, uh, since this is kind of a, an infinitely long ellipse, the semi-lattice rectum is going to be the same thing here, too. So we've got this distance here where we make a 90 degree angle between our periapse radius, and so that's going to be our semi-lattice rectum P. Um, and so what else can we figure out? Well, if we go back to our old friend, the vis viva equation, we know that specific mechanical energy is given by V squared over 2 minus mu over R, where mu is the gravitational parameter, remember. Um, so what does that mean? If we want to figure out the velocity it takes to go from an ellipse with an eccentricity of like 0.9999 or whatever to just the point where we open up our orbit, uh, let's think about this here. So if when we do that, or when we have, when we've just opened up our orbit, uh, our specific mechanical energy is going to remain constant for that orbit. So that means, let's call the velocity needed to open this up uh, escape speed. So let's write an expression for specific mechanical energy. So we've got escape speed, V escape squared over 2 minus mu, and then we'll make the radius our periapse radius, R P E. Okay? Uh, basically, what we're saying is like, what velocity do we need to have here so that our orbit opens up and becomes uh, a parabolic trajectory, meaning we'll escape from the gravitational influence of the planet? So if we take this and we, is, uh, and we equate it with values at infinity, and we'll think of values at infinity as being like out along here, right? So we'll just pretend we're getting infinitely far away from here, even though that's not really possible. It lets us make a, uh, some useful mathematical approximations. So if we equate this with the velocity out at infinity squared over 2 minus mu over the radius we'd have at infinity, well, let's see what happens. So remember, um, thanks to Kepler's laws, the closer you are in orbit to, uh, to your body, to your focus, the lower, the higher rather, your velocity is going to be. And the further out you are, the lower your velocity is going to be. So if we think of ourselves out at infinity, this velocity here is going to drop to zero. So we can cancel out that term zero. And similarly, if we think of our radius being infinitely large, then that means this term is going to drop to zero too. So that means that all this stuff here on the left-hand side is going to equal zero. And what can we do? We can rearrange this. So the specific, since the specific mechanical energy is zero, what we can do is add uh, mu over periapse radius to both sides, multiply both sides by two, and take the square root to figure out that the velocity needed to escape uh, gravity well is going to be the square root of 2 mu over r. So we know what delta v kind of we have to apply if we want to get out of uh, the sphere of influence of a planet. So yeah, let's move on and start talking about hyperbolas. Here we have a drawing of a hyperbola. Now, don't be fooled by the fact that there's two, uh, two shapes here. Um, this second shape here without a focus on it, this second shape uh, is kind of imaginary. It, we won't have an orbit that actually uh, looks like this. We won't be following this path in space. But it is pretty important to uh, be able to visualize this on our hyperbolic orbits for a reason that will become clear in a second. So uh, as before, we've got our focus here, which means we can define a periapse radius. And also, we can go ahead and define our semi-lattice rectum. So what we also can do is we can take the distance from this point here, or the vertex, and this point here, the center, 
and draw a line and we'll go ahead and call that A. And then what we can do is we can take the perpendicular distance from the vertex to this uh, dotted line here, this asymptote that the hyperbola will never cross and we're going to call that B. And then what we can finally do is we can take this distance here and call it C. And the reason we've done all that is because a very important um, quantity to know when you're talking about hyperbolic orbits is this angle here between these two lines. And we're going to call that delta or, uh, or the turn angle. And so uh, from trig, we know that we can find the turn angle by sine delta over 2 is going to equal A over C. And this quantity here, A over C, this is also going to equal 1 over E. Oh, which by the way, I haven't mentioned yet, but for a hyperbolic orbit, your eccentricity is going to be greater than 1. Now what we want to do is we're going to talk about hyperbolic excess speed. So hyperbolic excess speed is going to be the speed that we achieve if we apply a delta V that will give us a velocity here greater than escape speed. So we started talking about the escape speed for the parabolic orbits. So what happens when we, um, when we increase that, when we add to that? Well, we're still going to have a V infinity out here, V infinity, but it's going to be greater than zero, and we call this hyperbolic excess speed. So using the vis viva equation again, we can figure out what our hyperbolic excess speed is going to be. And this is very, very important when we do interplanetary transfers because we need to know um, what our hyperbolic excess speed is so we can slow down when we get to the planet rather than do a flyby, right? So going back to the vis viva equation, we've got specific mechanical energy equals this quantity we'll call V burnout. So this is uh, escape speed plus whatever additional speed that we've added. So V burnout squared over 2 minus mu over R burnout. And we're going to go ahead and equate that with V infinity squared minus 2, or uh, divided by 2, sorry, over mu over R infinity. And so as before, this R infinity here, this is going to be practically infinite, so this is going to cancel. So that will be zero. And then if we rearrange this, we can figure out that our hyperbolic excess speed here, V infinity, uh, V infinity squared is going to be V burnout squared, V burnout squared, minus 2 mu over R burnout. And that's also going to equal V burnout squared minus V escape squared. Notice here that if you plug this all in and you make V infinity zero as it would be for a parabola, uh, V burnout is just going to be your escape speed. And so we'll get a more hands-on feeling for what hyperbolic excess speed means next time. Uh, when we actually start mathing out interplanetary transfers, combining the knowledge of hyperbolas we have and um, an application of patch conics. Uh, but that's for next time. I just wanted to do a brief introduction here to parabolas and hyperbolas. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you had fun watching it because I had fun making it. If you need a refresher on the Viz Vivo equation, the top left video link on your screen will get you up to speed. And the others are some of my more recent content. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you next time.